Oh, okay. okay. We're recording and I'm going to go live and hopefully that's going to work. <laughs> okay. It says it's preparing to stream. Okay. I think we're on. I think we're on. The sound is good and everything is good to go. This is going to be awesome. a great day. It's a great day, right? It's a great day. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> mm. Oh, whoops. I have to do that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay, we're all set. And we were talking before we got on, we were talking about books and book collections. And I just wanted to mention that um, one of our, uh, I know I follow her religiously almost, and, and you followed her a little bit. Brooke Castillo talked about books, and she talked about how she constrained herself to just one book, one small bookshelf. And if, if there wasn't room in the bookshelf, she had to get rid of some books. So she had this sort of core collection of books she was reading and she didn't have the, the whole wall. So that's, that's her philosophy on it. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, the minimalist, I, I follow an, another minimalist because I've loved minimalism. I am not a minimalist. I am a minimalist in the becoming mm -hmm. uh, and Joshua Baker. So I follow, I did one of some of his classes just to you know get rid, declutter and get rid of things. Um, that's a philosophy too, that actually we don't need uh, all of those books, you know, right. we can read one book of, at a time or have it on Kindle or, mm -hmm. but my view, <laughs> my view of that, I love books and I think I am ready to get rid of everything in my house, but my books. Except the books. <laughs> yeah, I love the books and maybe there will come the day where I will let them go. But I, ha I love books. I, lo I have a lot of books in, um, that I listen to on Audible. So mm -hmm. I buy them on Audible or I listen to them on Hoopla. But I also buy the copy. Mm -hmm. because I just love to have them, to read through them, to underline, to yes. mark. And I just like to interact with the actual thing. Yeah. One of the nice things I think about the paper copy of a book is it's portability and shareability. When when I buy something on Kindle, I can't really yeah. share it with somebody else. But if I have a paper copy of a book, I can read it. And then if it's something that's interesting to me, I can pass it along to somebody else. Or if it's something that they might be interested in that I'm not interested in, I can pass it along. And it, that's not as easily done or even possible, I guess, with, uh, with Kindle and with Audible books. You know, they, yeah. they're sort of tied to your personal. They are your personal cloud or whatever. <laughs> they are. And also I am visual. So sometimes I just need to close my eyes and I can see exactly what is written because I'm seeing the page, I'm seeing my notes. And mm. that's how mm. I remember for my memory. Mm. Yeah. It's the visual, I'm visual. It's very good. So I like, I'm, I'm, I was reading this morning. I, my son wakes up at five in the morning. So I, I, I wake up um, with him and I was reading um, the... <laughs> My favorite book these days, The Myth of Normal, and I can see what I was underlining this morning with my pink marker. And I, I, I'm thinking about the idea. It's a research in Europe that was in 2011 about how mental health is becoming the disease of the century. Mm. And I'm sure it hasn't gotten down <laughs> with COVID and everything. But just by yeah. closing my eyes, I mean, I see exactly what it is about because I can see my notes, I can see how I underlined it and I can see what I wrote in the margin and everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's my mm -hmm. take on books. I love them. <laughs> yeah, books are, books are, are cool. Books are I, cool. <laughs> um, Charlotte Mason, uh, who is a um, philosopher, uh, um, how do I say? She was, um, educate, she was an education, how do you call them? A researcher? Okay. Well, yeah. and she had her school um, at the end of the 1800s. So she died beginning of 1900s. So she created this whole philosophy of education um, on, and one of her big things were books. And she talks about mind to mind, you know, because in books, it's really the mind of people that are transferred just like telepathy, right? It's yes, right, exactly. Really exactly. Mind to mind. And I think it's just wonderful that we can be in the head, in the mind of someone by reading his books. 
right? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Uh, when it's a book on research, like the book that I'm reading now with Gabor Mate, I think it's even diff more different. It's a little different than literature. And mm -hmm. literature is another genre that I, I just love because, yeah. Um, yeah, it does, it does, it does, it does set a lot. And in my, in a, in the next, next life, uh, I would love to study English and just go back. In, to the, in the next life, you're going to study English. That's in the next crazy. life or <laughs> in 10 years when I have time, if I could, I would go back to college now and study English again, mm. just because I love literature. I love poetry. Mm. I love, um, yeah, getting out the beauty of the words. And yeah. yeah. As you were saying that, I was thinking that uh, music is like that as well for me. Mm -hmm. So when I'm playing Bach, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like it's it's like telepathy over three centuries. You yes. know, I'm 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 playing what was in in his mind, and he shared what was in his exactly. mind with my mind. Exactly. So some people see the you know the arts as the um, if you if you're Christian or even if you believe in God, you believe that it's a gift that is given to us, right? Mm -hmm. Our talent, our skill, mm -hmm. and using it. It's like giving back to the giver of the gift, the fruit of the gift given, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I find that beautiful. And in Charlotte Mason's uh, philosophy of education, yes, music is a good, um, is a big part of it. Everything that is beauty, um, because the purpose of education is to, um, you know, teach truth, goodness, and beauty. And mm -hmm. beauty is found in 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 literature. It's found in music. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a liberal arts, basically. Even yeah. math is part of the liberal arts. Yeah. Right? Did you know that Bach? Every manuscript that he wrote at the end, he put. I, I'm not going to try to butcher the Latin, but he he put a note that said, "This is only to the glory of God." Glory of God, yeah, Gloria, um, Deus, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, uh, yeah that's yeah. really that's really interesting, and yeah, and yes. you look in all of his music, and there are all sorts of mind blowing correspondences that that everybody finds, and that's probably only scratching the surface of of the depth of yeah his expression towards towards his uh, creator yeah. by putting all these numerological references and and everything. Exactly. In. That's why I will. I personally love Handel's Messiah so much. Mm. Right? So it's about, <laughs> you know, the so it's um all it's Bible verses, you know, the Isaiah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, well, probably is that is that why you named your son Isaiah? Oh, that's another story for another time. So I used to be a Muslim, and okay. when I named my son Isaiah, I was a Muslim. I had no idea, but for me, I came to Christ later, and that's part of my story, the testimony I share about how God was pursuing me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh -huh. my son, I have Isaiah, and then I have Noah. Those are ma major names in the Bible. Yes. yes. So it was yes. um, it was a sign. It was God's love. He said His passion is love for me. <laughs> Uh, pursuing me so that's a story for another day <laughs> yeah but my, messiah i i love the um it, it's different than his other oratorios and his opera well, his operas of course because it's not there's not a plot that yes. it's it's just bible verses that's that have, have they've uh uh i forget that christopher jennings i think is the name of the guy who the, who's the librettist he took that's verses true. from the king james bible and put them together into that's sort true. of a a coherent narrative, which is more of a meditation on like about Chris uh, arrival of Christ, about Christ's coming, you know, yep. and the, yep. the end, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's a <laughs> um, wow. I, I, I mean, well, of course, you know, I'm I'm crazy about Messiah, and it it comes in and out of my life mm -hmm. frequently, and it's been in my life quite a bit over the past year and a half or so because yeah. I had this idea that I was uh, going to, and I, I say I am, I'm, I'm going to write a musical that, that's based on that idea of Messiah and combining some other things uh, with it. But, so it's on my music stand. Mm. And that's, that's part of my routine is I'll, I'll read through a part of the score, you know, maybe I'll read through the, the first violin or the second violin part or the viola or the, the bass or whatever, or, or try to even sing it. 
It's beautiful. Yeah. We we study it every December. We've done mm -hmm. it the past two December's. Um, for Christmas, it's kind of our, um, you know, before Christmas, our Advent. Yes. And, uh, we go through the libretto, you know, day by day, and then we read it and we sing it, and that's we listen to it over and over again during during Christmas time. Yeah. And the... I think we went to see uh, the opera. We went to see it uh, at the Detroit uh, Symphony Orchestra the year December before COVID. It was, I mean, wonderful. Yeah. It was magic. Mm. And I would go again. It's beautiful. Anyway. Well, we'll, we'll have to go together sometime. We'll have to find a performance. Yeah, I would love that. We'll I think it, it might be fun. Yes, because you know even more. And so I think the experience is going to be so much more. Yeah. I, I took I took my ex-wife to it. We went once. It was, it was playing That's in Denver. It. And um, I don't think she she reveled in it as much as me because you know it is it is a big commitment if if you're going to see the complete version with with breaks and intermissions it's like three hours oh, yeah. three hours of baroque music and for me that's like yeah and, <laughs> that's and your job. for someone else it's like well I, I don't know that's a long time to spend <laughs> but it, 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 I mean, that's uh, may also what we're doing in coaching. It's about all the being, you know, because we don't have we don't have time to sit and enjoy. We don't uh, pay attention to what's yeah. going on through our senses, you yeah. know, our perception of the world. And yeah. uh, to me, it's really learning to to be, you know, what are you, what's your experience right now? What is coming through your, you know, your senses? What are you smelling? What are you touching? What are you mm -hmm. hearing? What are you yeah. feeling all of that? And if you just sit and listen to any opera, any music, just by being and breathing, I think it changes your whole state of being. Yes, yes. When you allow yourself to be. Absolutely. And it's, it's, um, it's one experience when you're a listener and we're so fortunate now in this time of, of history that we can, you know, the idea of a listener is something that's, that's only maybe a hundred years old, mm. really, as far as somebody could be an experiencer of music by being a listener rather than um, being a, a performer or a player. Or a critic, right? Yeah, because the yeah, way yeah. we also approach the arts is um, by critici criticizing. And I remember Cindy Rollins, I refer to her a lot. I like her. Um, and she was talking about the word understand to sitting under, you know, be sitting under. And when we are listening to an opera or reading a book or um, a poetry, it's instead of we, like the, our modern society, wants us to read it as a critic. I like it or I don't like it. We're, and we don't mm, yeah, yeah, we don't yeah. look at it and try to understand what the author was wanting to convey. Mm -hmm. Just to mm -hmm. so just to study it. So when we I was teaching my children for three years, we would um the way why they love music today or why they love books, it's because we didn't approach them to criticize to critic to criticize it for you know in a critical point of view it was it was more to just experience it exactly or yeah. not even the reading comprehension it's mm -hmm. really to experience it so they will sit and i'll do read alouds and they will narrate they will tell back to me their perception and yeah. i'm not here to correct or to it's what they get out of it yeah. and i think the whole beauty it's sitting in the experience and um trying to understand you know it's so much I feel like we really get most the, the most out of it when we have that posture of being a listener, an observer, mm -hmm. rather than a critic and wanting to give our opinion all the time, right? Yeah, that's so good. And that is the essence of, as far as I can tell, I've, I've talked about this and I'll, I'll continue to talk about this because I'm, I'm very passionate about this. That's the essence of the secret sauce to to an amazing experience to is, grow is, is to being grow. the observer being the observer of your experience exactly with, with love and without criticism yes yeah. just um come coming empty coming empty yes. i was with my friend i don't know how we are doing time-wise but I actually was we'll have home. to we'll have to 
be very quick, but. Okay. Anyway, I was, I had lunch with my very good friend yesterday and she was talking, she was asking me, okay, so how do you coach people? Like, do you have all the answers? And I said, I have, I have zero answer. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I, said, I don't have the answers. I said, and I gave her the analogy of when I was teaching my kids, was I an excellent teacher to my kids? I believe so, because you know, what, where they are now show that they have received an excellent education. But what happened is that I was just alongside them and I was their guide and I yes. pushed them further. Yep. And, but I didn't have all the answers. I said, no, I don't have all the answers, but by the end of our time together, you have the answers. And that's what happened. Right. Right. <laughs> and yeah, I, I've been in coaching sessions where, where the, the client is, is sort of surprised when I, when I admit that, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm working on this as well, just, just as much as, as you are. And my, my job is to uh, kind of show you where you're at right now. Exactly. Yeah. Work alongside to remove, you know, to remove your limiting beliefs and to just make you see sometimes it's like there are scales in your eyes and just yeah. it's to help you remove them. And then you yeah. see, you have your own insight. It comes mm -hmm. from you. I don't tell you, we don't tell you, right? Yeah, exactly. We help you see. <laughs> yes, we, we help, we help you see. We help you. We we're, or uh, one analogy that I've always loved is we're a mirror. Exactly. Yeah. I love. It. Yes, we are a mirror. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop it right there so we okay, can. Okay, that's can stream it. That's that was good. So everybody, uh, thanks for joining us. Whether you we have a YouTube channel more. now, right? Do you want to talk about we, it? We, uh, well, I'll let me talk about when everything's uploaded. I just established okay. it, and um, this morning I'm going to upload the episodes we have, and then it should be in rudimentary form to, tomorrow with, with all the Coming things. soon. We'll tell more, talk more about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for following us. Yes. Okay. So this is, we're, we're I'm going to say we're out <laughs> and then press the button. Okay, good. Then I'll stop this.